All right. Thank you and once again for tuning in. This is Jinsomnia Nights and I am Jack. And uh, our guest for tonight, I guess you could call him a builder, a shaper, a molder, a fellow dreamer and artist. He is the founder of the architecture startup firm, We Architecture and Design, and he is a yoga master. Oh, shit. And without further ado, let me introduce to you, Mr. Felix Imperial. Hello, Mr. Felix. Hi. Good Hi, evening. Jack. Good evening. How are you doing tonight? Yes, I'm good. I'm not a yoga master, though. <laughs> I'm kidding. I had heard, though, I had heard, though, that you were into yoga. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Like introduce yourself to the listeners. Hi guys. So name's Felix, or as my friends call me Berto. Just call me Berto, guys. Just call me Berto. So Berto. yeah, I'm an architect by profession. So I work. Uh, I work a job, and I have my. I founded my design outlet page, whatever you want to call it, on Facebook called We Design and Architecture. Mm-hmm. Check it out. Um. Yeah, so I've been doing that for seven years now. Seven years. Yeah, I've been working for seven years, and it's been it's been good. It's been fun. Mm-hmm. That's mostly all that what time, my life revolves around. Yeah. For all that time, seven years, have you only been working for yourself, or did you also, you know, go into other jobs? No, other I have companies? a job. I have a job. I'm I, I'm in a I work for a design studio as well called Double okay. C Design. So my my we design is just like an outlet, an extra work I get on the side mm-hmm. or some projects. My the firm I work for can't take. Um, I I I I I take it on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what do you do in your main job? In my main job, I do the same thing. It's funny, yeah. So this is easy, <laughs> but like, I have less creative control because you know I'm a I'm assistant to our creative chief creative director. So of course his it's his designs at Vietano, you know, mm-hmm. I assist him more. So I use my we design as my outlet to express myself more. So basically, your main job and your hobby and your passion are all the, the same. same. Much the same thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. One just gives That's me more very time nice when I get home. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you said you graduated from architecture. You took architecture. Yeah, took architecture in Uste, Go Uste, Go Tigers. USC. UST, yeah. So, Pinoval mm-hmm. boy ako. Okay. okay yeah. So, I went to... How long... Wait, we went to UST, no? How long ago was that? That was seven years ago. I started working after after college. Wow. I had to start working. No, no. I took a break. I took like a six-month six break until I, until I felt guilty to start working. Why is that? Well, after college, you don't want to... You don't want to work. You're kind of apprehensive yeah. about getting a job, so you kind of chill out. You go home to your yeah. parents for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Lie yeah. down on the couch for six months, and then you're just like, "Ah, shit, gotta get a job." So yeah. How is how is that though? Like, what are the difficulties you faced from graduating from that period of transition to from graduating school to starting working? I guess. Like the shift from school to. Like a more professional yes. setting, you mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I was way different. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm just. I'm lucky. I have a really good mentor that kind of guided me through everything. But I could imagine it being even more difficult if you didn't have like you know a good boss. So, but yeah, that helped me transition. And I don't know. It felt the same, really. Like school and then work, just a bit more formal. You just have to meet your deadlines more. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. How many years does architecture course usually last? So Oste, ano siya? Five years siya so Oste. Five so years. Five you, years you did, <laughs> you did five years. How is that? I'm a, you know. <laughs> Shout out to all my classmates, all my smart classmates mm. that that um I wanted to sit beside. They helped me get through college. People How's that like? Pag- graduate with. Ah, really? Really? You wanna share something about that? <laughs> No, no, no. UST might hear this stuff. It's my revoke license. Code. Okay, okay. Pero, but, yeah, you know, how is that like, though, uh, studying architecture? And I'm actually personally interested in this because, you know, I used to have this friend from high school and we went to the same school, to the same college. And then after two years, he just dropped from the face of the planet and I just never saw him again. 
So I always assumed that you know, I don't know. You just didn't have a just didn't have a social life anymore. So just I always assumed. You mean sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I I just always assumed that you know architecture is just very intense course. Oh, it was. (laughs) I mean, it you become really close with the people you're with because you know you're always working together, spending time together. I didn't really have time to make friends outside of. Uh, UST during college because mm-hmm. you know, like you said it's pretty intense all the late nights mm-hmm. what got you into architecture though like was it always something that you wanted to become like when you were a kid like hey I want to grow up to be an architect someday no 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 mm-hmm. I, I wanted to become an inventor that was a job I remember I was like the first thing I thought I wanted to take up industrial design initially at UST And then, um, when I took the entrance exam, there was this part of the exam that had like shapes and stuff. And looking back, it's pretty dumb. But I was just feeling like I was just trying to answer the questions. So I failed that. I failed that. Ano, yung, but it was a special test for industrial design that was with the entrance exam. So I failed that. didn't get into industrial design. But I had high enough grades to go right next. To the building, which is in the same building, pala, yung CFAD at Art mm-hmm. ng USD. So, sabi ko dun na lang sa kabila. Kung di ako sa CFAD, di ako makapasok. Try na lang natin mag-arty. So I didn't want to be an architect. I had no idea about being an architect at all, like zero. I mean, I lived in a house. That was my experience of yeah. architecture. <laughs> okay, so you really had. Punta lang ako dun. You really had no prior, you know, influences with architecture no. people. So how did you develop? Like I, I would assume. Can I assume that right now? Of course, you're already passionate about what you do, right? But it's it, it was it's not like a passion. Na parang I was born to do this kind of passion. I don't know. Maybe there's different passions. I just try to work hard, and then parang that's where I get the passion. But hindi siya yung I don't know what kind of passion. What passion is yet? Yeah. Then I'm not sure. Well, what what did you expect though when you got you first got into architecture? Like, what were your expectations from this course? Zero. Zero expectations, literally. Zero. Yeah, I stepped into college just like, okay, let's just do this. Um, that's, that's why I don't know about the fashion thing, but I learned to love it. That's a better way mm-hmm. to say. But can I shout out to Tita Melissa? All right. Oh no, I can't. Shout out. Shit. <laughs> you can do. You can mention anyone you want. Ah, okay, cool. But from that, how did you build? You know, a sort of liking into it of course you you should like what you're doing right yeah 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 so how did you develop how did you find your you know how you work to college yeah so i got my job after the bar and then i got thrown into the world of working in architecture and you start you don't start at the top so you don't start designing right away like you were in college you kind of You're interpreting other people's designs. You're doing all that AutoCAD stuff. So it gets kind of you, you get burned out after a while. But then I just kept telling myself, you know, look, it's it's a process. So I'm not gonna start designing because I'm not like a prodigy or anything, de right? <laughs> So I had to learn. So I, did, I realized that, nah, shit, I actually have to research and learn and and work hard at it. And then I got better, and I believe in. A saying that's like, um, even if you don't like something, if you're good at it, you might end up liking it. You know what I mean? Like if you're mm-hmm. not good at it, mm-hmm. like you don't like it, but then you're good at it. At some point, you'll be like, oh, you know, being that's that's how I kind of developed it. Mm-hmm. But from that, though, how did you how did you got to start up your own uh, business of We Design? Tell us a little about about the lockdown. Oh, so it's brand new. Yeah, yeah. That's just like what two months. But but I had projects I said before, and these were some things I've already done, but I never posted them online. Uh, mm. so it's also like my portfolio, I guess. So I took all of these projects I used to do. Some of them I uh kind of revisited and redesigned, and then I just started sharing it on my page. So there's there's some stuff there that I haven't even built. They're not even been built. They're just like conceptual. Uh, mm-hmm. Designs I like to do just for fun, so it's kind of like that. It's really just a creative outlet. So these are your own, you know, designs and concepts. Yeah. What do you usually like to design or conceptualize? 
what do I usually like to design or conceptualize? Ooh. Tented with a problem I have to solve. So, mm-hmm. um, I like doing that. And so, you know, you get clients, so they have a problem. That's basically the job, the way I see it. It's uh, trying to improve people's lives and finding solutions to whatever their problems are, their needs, diba. Right? So from that, mm. that's when I try and I, I put in my own, my own style, I guess. Always fitting mm. to the project. So I don't do anything that's really the same. I try to look for people who want, I mean, I hope for clients that want to do something different all the time. Uh, mm. Yeah. Yeah, I do get that. How did you, how did you end up, uh, how you said you, you thought about this during the lockdown, right? Yeah. So have you had any have you, have you had any clients already? Actually, since I've posted it, I got one client, which I was surprised. Oh. It's just the lockdown debut. How does it? Yeah, so super super lucky and thankful for that. Um yeah, my friend. So it's a condo, small condo. So like that. So sometimes we'll do like a house and it's kind of it's big, right? And now I'm doing a 36 square meter one bedroom. But now I but I I I feel like it's going to be so much more fun. Because there are so many problems to solve, you know what I mean? So like, yes, yes, yes. you, you kind of get creative because now you have to come up with design solutions. So parang the creativity starts flowing out because there are so many problems. Parang mm. how, so how is your creative process like then? Like how do you come up with ideas and concepts? Research, always research. Mm. Um, I mean, I look at the project and what the client needs, right? And then... I research on their background, or what the client is like, and then mm-hmm. after that, I look at what's what's in, what's contemporary, not even modern. Modern's not modern. Modern doesn't mean new, actually. So you look for the contemporary, mm-hmm. how because that's what I want to do. Actually. Yeah, I want to be contemporary design. At the at the try to be at the contemporary. Yeah, contemporary. Would you would you care to expound on that, like? Yeah, I actually recognize that as a. There's, uh, I'm actually aware there's another ano, diba, different styles of architecture, like, you know, like Art Deco and yeah, contemporary. Do you have any particular influences in that regard, or especially you know other? What architects? I mean by contemporary is like, um, contemporary is like now, like belonging and in and occurring in the present, something like that. Uh, so. Mm-hmm. I'm addressing what's the reality now, but I always take take reference from the past, um, from the greats, diba? Right? I mean, yes, exactly. It's no problem standing on the shoulders of giants, bro. So you look back, oh, see what people what people have done, like and then you make man. it contemporary. Because the problems in 1960 aren't problems now, but there's a lot of stuff I can learn from from whatever era. Like, or... what sort of problems are you? Would you be referring to? Oh well, no! Everything's smaller condos, de right? So, mm. the problems. I just stop saying problems. Challenges. My, challenges. my boss taught me that. Never say problems, guys. I have a challenge. Mm. <laughs> That's a nice sentiment. Yeah. So, what has been the most challenging challenge so far in your in this business of architecture that you've been doing for seven years? Dealing with clients. Oh, I was afraid you're gonna say that. <laughs> I think everybody says that. Mm-hmm. But I mean it. I don't mean it in a negative way. I mean it's difficult, but it's fun when you get to know your client. But I mean, mm-hmm. and also, may mga client na talaga you just decide, man, it's not gonna work, de ba? Mm-hmm. But even the clients that are good to you, they you still have to know how to kind of manage them and talk to mm-hmm. them. So how's that? How's that like? How's that? You gotta like, be you know, very polite. <laughs> dealing, dealing with, with clients. Polite. Yeah, yeah, you kind of have to wear some sort of professional mask when you talk mm. to them, and always make them feel like you care. That's my advice. Always, always make them feel like you care about them. You're always gonna like do what they want, but then you convince them that you your idea is better. See, that's the secret. I'm just mm. because I think a lot of a lot of times, tigo parang nagawa na lang. Parang yung yung problema natin sa client, kaya na lang magdesign parang bel. I think that happens a lot. Yeah, I do get that. I think, yeah, it's true what you said. It's the same for, you know, every other industry. <laughs> But, uh, I'm, okay, this is actually an interesting question. 
if for example I'm a client and I have a design like for example you I will ask you to design a, a condo unit or you know one bedroom how long does it usually take to from that design once it's finalized how long does it, does it usually take to you know get built get done like what are the obstacles or the factors involved the obstacles and factors um probably take uh, for that size just the, uh, just the design phase probably a month and a half and the obstacles ng are coming or you know pleasing the client being able to express yourself and addressing their needs so you're both happy mm-hmm. other than that no other obstacle and then what does it take to for it to get built or does that depend on the money <laughs> money always always no nah. um yeah you go you you design it and then in my service what i offer is i i help them with the contractors pa so the design go and then i i project manage it and i quantify the costs so same contractor they might charge you but you don't know how much stuff costs to buy my client so i review those costs and then usually bid it out to maybe three contractors they all give their costs in then i help the client review them uh make help them make the good decision and then the dis- the building starts and then after that parang bantay na lang uh, go there make sure they're implementing mm-hmm. my design um yeah so you, you have to be involved as well as a designer i think to be a good designer you have to be involved until the delivery kasi meron naman na design tapos uh bigay mo submit mo tapos bayad ka na saris ka na but then you never know what they're going to do with your design so mm-hmm. it's like i don't know making a song giving it to someone to like sing over it or something you know? yeah 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 outside of architecture though what are your hobbies or things that you like to do interests all that yeah. like, i've heard you like to do yoga <laughs> but I like to party i like to party also <laughs> i like to do yoga i like to do yoga no quarantine mm. lang naman just quarantine those are my quarantine hobbies yoga quarantine hobbies and partying yeah and partying uh, outside work i don't know i got into a bunch of hobbies i used to ride a motorbike for a while with my friend um what else do i do I watch netflix now mm-hmm. and... what is it about yoga though what is it about yoga very calming i used to be anti-yoga okay how did you find it then and then it's i found it very humbling you feel awesome. weak as fuck. You feel super weak doing it. Because mm-hmm. they're very simple, the poses. But then to be done properly, um, it's actually quite difficult. Like to you hold your core and all of that. Like mm-hmm. It activates muscles you don't normally use. Kasi. So, really? Yeah, like all those little muscles that you don't even know exist. And when, you, when you're being coached uh, through it and how to do the poses properly, you're activating those muscles. So, bigla na lang, you're just you're not even moving, but you start sweating, and yeah, you get really tired, and you feel like you're really weak from doing such a simple pose. So you mm-hmm. kind of just have to give in, and you're like stretching past. It's like, yeah, it's relaxing, and then the breathing comes in. What are the benefits of yoga actually? Like, is there some sort of, uh, is it somehow like involved with meditation or something like that? Yeah, there's a meditation aspect. I think the the full experience. I'm not sure. I'm not a yoga master. I'm telling you. I watched 30 minute <laughs> videos today. But what I've <laughs> what I've gathered is like, I think the meditation is part of the whole yoga, um, the concept of doing yoga and the process. It's a meditative state. At least that's mm-hmm. yeah. That's how it feels. You're breathing. It's quiet. Um. Yeah, I think meditation is part of yoga. Definitely. Is it also a uh... Is it also a form of workout that you do you actually you know gain muscles from it or yeah you lose weight or what? what you gain muscles you lose weight it's a, it's an yeah so it's like a meditation exercise right? yeah because you know when I see videos of people doing yoga it looks so simple right? yeah diba? it looks so simple mm-hmm. and you're like that's why I never was like a fan I used to do muay thai I was into muay thai before yoga like mm-hmm. I I had I went to a couple of fights like also with a friend. Um, so I was super into like that aggressive. I thought the aggressive sport would let out my aggression. Parang ganun. 
And then I tried yoga and I was like, wow, so much, I feel so much chiller, um, more relaxed, and my body doesn't hurt as much. So I was like, Yo, yoga's dope, yoga's dope. Because, mm-hmm. you know, when speaking of meditation and yoga, uh, you know, I've heard this. Uh, have you heard of David Lynch? No. The, the, the film director. Anyway, uh, he advertises this form of meditation called Transcendental Meditation, which basically he says that it's a way of activating your mind and going deeper, delving deeper to your unconscious mind. Mm-hmm. And the way the way he explains it, if you read it, you, you actually have to pay like uh, $50,000 or $100,000 or something. It's very <laughs> expensive. It's like some guru shit. It's like a secret, you know, society. But if you read the advertisements, you're just gonna sit there. Dude, that sounds Does it like work? Okay. Do people mm-hmm. say it works? I don't believe shit. You have to pay for that. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't really believe it. Because if you read it, it sounds like, dude, it sounds like just some magic mushroom trip, <laughs> the way it was described. And people actually pay for it. Yeah, I don't know about that. Just like in the spirit of yoga, parang mahal na nyan. For like peace. Yeah. Because there's other yoga, like Kundalini, that I've heard about. It's kind of like that. Like you can do it a certain way and trip out. Parang mm-hmm. David, what's, what's your, your what's your uh, interest in yoga though? Like how did you find it? Like does it help you? Because actually I've heard that uh, meditation and yoga actually helps you know, creative types to you know find ideas and whatnot. Help yeah, you it helps the creative me process. Blackboard. Helps me with focus. focus. So, yeah, and yeah, meditate now and think about a state of meditation and thought is good. And after the exercise, you know, exercise is good for you in general, diba. Right? So, it, I I think I have ADHD. I'm not diagnosed, but my mom keeps telling me I do. So whenever I do yoga and let out all that, you know, energy, I become more focused. So that's how mm-hmm. it helps me. That's nice. I might try that. But uh, other than that, do you have a certain you know philosophy or strict regimen for of life regimen you know, <laughs> yeah yeah or whatever or you know involving architecture or the creative process or other things that you like to do other things that I like to do well sorry I didn't get the question <laughs> <laughs> sorry yeah medyo malabo nga No, I meant, I meant like, parang, do you have, do you follow a strict uh, regimen or philosophy or dogma relating to architecture, like, like that? Or related to architecture, but I try to do my best. <laughs> I just try mm-hmm. to do my best, yeah. Pero, my dogma. That's my dogma shit. I should think about that, bro. Thank you, but mm-hmm. I can't answer you right now, actually. Yeah, have you actually worked with other, you know, well-known or famous architects? Well known, and I'm asking because I actually I actually don't know any architects. Ah, uh, then no. Like in the in in the industry, they're not that famous then, huh? Here here in the Philippines, in the Philippines, the worked with not really, but we did we did like uh, there was one project where the Philippines was invited to a Biennale. If you've heard of that, it's like an art mm-hmm. festival in Italy, um, and they invited architecture firms, so the big ones, the the famous ones. Of the Philippines to create um, sculptures, so my where I worked um, was we're hired to document it lang. Mm. That's as about as close as I got to uh, not really working with, but watching these famous, the biggest firms in the Philippines uh, do some artwork. It's in the Metropolitan Museum now, I think, uh, Ross Boulevard. It's called Mohon. Mm-hmm. Other than that, though, what are your other interests, like films or art or anything like that? Well, films and art. I think it, I think the whole design field um, mm-hmm. kind of uh, permeates to each other. You know, um, movies, art, books. You can take from anything and apply it to to architecture, to graphic design, um, to film. You know, like the lines when you're shooting a film. Those same rules, mm. I guess, apply to architecture, the laws of symmetry and all of that. So I think it's good to have like a be well-rounded as a creative. That's so, I to watch, so, I, so I try to watch movies. I try to watch. I force myself sometimes to watch artsy movies because I'm not trip. Mm-hmm. 
Pero just mm-hmm. like, yeah, I, I do get that. that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like, I'm gonna watch an artsy movie just to like, not feel artsy, but you know, like, to learn and see what's what's happening. Mm-hmm. What are your views, actually, you know, on life and party? You talked about part. You, you talked about partying a while ago. We're gonna go from my professional life to my partying life. It's exactly how it is. So I start off okay. and I go to work and I go out after. No, 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 I'm just joking about the partying. I just like to go out and have fun. I like going to festivals, live music. That's a hobby. Is, is, that, is that a hobby? I guess. Yeah. 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 What, what what music are you into? What music am I into? I listen to everything. Really, I go through phases. Long, siguro. Like I listen to hip hop for like a month and then change. But I don't have like a favorite genre. Um. I don't listen mm-hmm. to country music. I tried, but I didn't. Okay. So, so far, you're not like in Diego Kinaya, na na fucking good. Okay, okay, it's all right. <laughs> I'm actually a fan of country music, but that's all right. Maybe uh, I haven't listened to good country music. See, mm-hmm. I don't know what's good country music. I'm sure there is, but then like what I see on the mainstream, I guess it's just not great. Right. Like Tim McGraw, is that good country music? I'm uh, not now. familiar. I'm not familiar. Sorry. So anyway, no hate to the no hate, yeah. no hate to the country music crowd. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Here's an interesting question, actually, from our producers. Do you know anyone, or do you yourself have or do play The Sims? You know, considering that it's considering comparing it to architecture, and you have the same. You know, I I guess you could call it creative freedom to play yeah. anything. Nah, I don't play the Sims. <laughs> you never. <laughs> never I get I get in this when I play the Sims because it's limiting. Mm-hmm. I find it limiting. Because I can you know do it in other I mean another program. No, must you can create shapes in Sims. Oh, you mean limiting in an in an architecture sense? Yeah, so I don't really find it fun. And I used to, sure, but yeah, I haven't played Sims in so long. When I was a kid, you know, you know, I usually Minecraft. play. Yeah, I know. I play League of Legends. That's what mm. I play. I don't play Sims. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One would think, no, is I think that's like a, it's like a stereotype. Stereotype. <laughs> yeah. Who are you taking Sims? Kaya nga. Meron naman. Meron naman. It's not me. Hmm. Was there like a, a course on the Sims? You know, a joke. <laughs> wala, wala. All right. So other than that, do you have anything else you want to share? You know. About how how have you been doing actually you know this especially, especially amidst, amidst this, this pandemic. Nice question. That's a good especially question. Especially amidst, amidst this pandemic. pandemic. Like how have you been managing? What have you been you know doing with your time besides architecture? Sleeping, <laughs> yoga. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been it's been difficult. I think yeah, it's been difficult for sure. Um, so working from home is weird. Number one, I used to mm-hmm. I also used to I you I'm used to going to the office so. Parang I, when I get up, I'm like, my work's here. And I'm like, oh, when do you really escape it now? So I don't, I, mm-hmm. parang everything's just jumbled up. And so a day, I think I just have to develop a good routine. So I try to do a routine, but it feels like my sanity's in check. Pero, mm-hmm. di ba, sometimes nakabaliw na. It's to be home for so long. Yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> how do you keep your, how do you keep your sanity though? Like, what do you do? To combat that, I guess. Or do you live alone actually, or? I have family? been living alone for five months. Mm-hmm. I've been living alone. Yeah, I usually live with my sister, but she moved out she with my aunt, so I've been, I've been alone for five months. So that's trippy. It was very. It was. It was. It was easier at the start. Like it. it it's I harder. Do get that. Than, you know what I mean? It's like. I I do agree with that actually. You know what I mean? You're like two months is fine. Like for five months now, like okay, where's this all going? What are we doing? It's happening, guys. Mm-hmm. It's How happening do you with deal the with Philippines? That, you know, like I just gotta hope for loneliness or being alone. No, it's temporary, or at least I hope it's temporary. So you just try to wait, wait it out, de ba? Ano man ibang choice. So try to do yoga, try to exercise. Um, there's some things I do that I, I don't think I can say. On the air, to help you relax, Ooh. joke lang. What do you mean? You can say anything you want. I can say anything I want. You gonna post my photo? Nah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, just some help from some organic stuff that you buy and inorganic. 
mm-hmm. organic and organic. Yeah, yeah I just try, yeah, to, you know, to, try to like be super OC. I think a lot of people are becoming OC. People start cooking now, right? Everybody's baking. Yeah, exactly. she bakes, so everybody's coping their own way. Uh, yeah. yeah. How many designs have you <laughs> conceptualized already since the quarantine started? Oh, too long, na man. Too long. Mm-hmm. I'm working on something now at work, so I'm kind of busy, and I have to go on my construction site next week, which I'm freaked out about because I don't want to get COVID. So mm-hmm. we're gonna have to do that in my PPE suit. Mm-hmm. How long is that, you know, gonna take for the, you know, in terms of the industry actually, the architecture industry? Uh, it's super How slow now. They... Everything's super mm-hmm. slow. All deliveries are affected. Um, industry is not looking good. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. What did you have? Did you have any long term plans? You know, for the future. Yeah, I just, career, actually, career I just wanted wise. to be. I wanted to be like you know. What do you sorry? What do you mean in my life? Career wise, sorry. Career wise. Well, yeah, just try to be better and better and better. Try to learn. Try to get different projects. Work with different people, and just see where it takes me. You know. Mm-hmm. In life, though, my long term in life. What do you mean, like wife and kids? <laughs> yeah, we can talk about that if you want. We can talk about that. We can talk about no, that. No. I don't want to think about that yet. <laughs> I haven't thought about that yet. No, I meant in your, you know, in your pursuit of architecture. Like, do you have any long-term plans for we designs or anything yeah, you mean, want to I achieve? Want to, I want to expand. Obviously, if I if I grow it large enough, I can. If I get more more projects, I can kind of uh, leave my company and work for myself. I think that's my long-term plan is to work for myself. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have any? Do you already have any designs that have been? Built already? Yeah, I have two. One house and one uh, condo. Mm, where is this? Uh, the condo is in Paranaque Bay, or Taguig, Arca South. Ayala Development. The house is in where I grew up in Bicol. We can talk about that. I grew up in Bicol. By oh, the way. Really? Okay. Whereabouts in Bicol? Albay. You know where Mayon is? The volcano? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, so that Perfect. was my, my view out my window. When I was growing up, I came to college. I mean, I came to Manila when I went to college. So I've been in Manila for seven plus five, eleven years. Twelve, so, twelve years. But most of my childhood, no, all my childhood, I grew up in Bicol, in Albay. Mm. How was that like? It was different. Yeah, definitely different. I grew up uh, next to the beach, so my dad grew up in Manila with my lolo from Bicol so he moved back and stuff so I grew up in this little barangay not even a barangay when I when I was young it was a barrio and then wow yeah yeah so so you're you're actually a country boy then yeah dude I'm from the for sure mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how was that like you know transitioning from that to moving to Manila it wasn't Did that hard to say I had a lot of cousins and family in Manila so I'd come to Manila every summer but going into college yeah I didn't know anybody I didn't know anybody Um, my group in Bicol uh, were very small, so not a lot of people. So when we got to college, everybody went to different schools. So I didn't really know a lot of people. So I had to make new mm-hmm. friends when I came here. When was the last time we were there? Last Holy Week last year. Yeah. You know, actually, I gotta ask though. Yeah. Oh, sorry, you were saying something. No, you ask your question. I, I think I know what this. Uh, yeah. Go. Go. I'm actually just. Curious man, like yeah, I know. Asking him the like, other race card. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. You look, cause no, you were like, like you were you, Yeah, right? I was. I was. You, you kind of, you kind of, you kind of look misty. No, there's no video to this. That's why I didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, we're gonna post your picture though. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, you kind of look misty, so dude. Yeah, yeah. So, I was the only one, uh, misty. So when I was growing up, so it was a trip. It was. I got stares all the time, you know, especially in the province. I don't know how it, when I get to Manila, people hear I me. Mean, But when I was growing up, I got like looks all the time. Like, oh, there's a white guy. There's a white boy. And then everybody was always shocked when I'd speak in Bipolano. So obviously, I'm from there. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was, that was funny. 
was funny growing up. I would always be that white kid in the photo. <laughs> in the group photos, class photos. So like, boom, there he is, right there. But you're pure Bicolano. Yeah, I grew up there. I'm pure. My, my mom is from Bacolod. So I can speak and understand Ilongo. My dad's from Bicol, but my mom's half half Spanish. Yeah. Ah, okay. To answer that I question. See. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I grew up near here. They grew up near here in the Philippines, so. You can be yeah. foreigner. Okay. <laughs> Colonizer, white ako, bro. <laughs> Sobrang hassle. Sorry about that, though. Like, I kind of figured, oh, I think this guy knows what I'm gonna be talking about. <laughs> I'm gonna ask oh, him. Yeah, I know when I said I was from Bicol. That's the next question. He's from Bicol. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you miss it, though? Like, your childhood? Now? My, ch- my childhood? I think we all miss childhood. <laughs> I miss my childhood. Yeah, definitely. Here's an interesting question, though. Since you're an architect, yeah, like, do you see yourself ever designing something that would, you know, would would look good from in your barrio or in Bicol or? Al-Bai-Bai? Oh yeah, that's what I want to do. Eh? I want to do something back there. Pero they're not. At, that's why I like it in Manila. Also, not to more China, not to sound like an asshole, not to say anything bad about Bicol, but like in Manila, there's more room for creativity i guess people are more open-minded here um uh, if i work back there i already know what to expect kind of everybody just wants the same thing priorities are different i guess so mm-hmm. in terms of like my my career it's better to be here what i miss about Bicol is the what people would usually think you'd miss about the province the buying quiet life uh chill none of this mm-hmm. pnp roaming around and shit there's PNP roaming around. In Manila, yeah. Fuck this shit. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be Bicol. In Bicol, though, I, I've actually I know, never been. I was super been, chill so. there. Mm-hmm. I had super I've actually never been. been. Uh, has it already been, you know, urbanized? Like, are there a lot of buildings? Tangin na may SM na kami. SM Bicol. SM Legaspi City. Bicol's the whole province. Legaspi. Yeah. Pero, oh, okay. Sorry. Alba is the province of Bicol. That's where I'm from. And I live near the I think the biggest city at us, Albay. Oh my God, people who are from Bicol will probably get mad if I don't know this. But I think it's Legaspi City. I think that's the biggest city. Uh, you haven't heard of Legaspi City? I've heard, I've heard. I've just never been. So that's, yeah, so that's like the the biggest city. So my SM I guess they feel like they're, they're moving expanding. up in the world. I don't think mm-hmm. so, but fine. If SM is your, your... So you're against that? You're against the, the urbanization. I mean, yeah, same. it's good. If, I mean, you have jobs and stuff, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, you're just making SM richer, really. And I mean, the people of Beagle could probably put up their own mall. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Is that something Is that something you'd like to design for Beagle or Albay? Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. But I won't work for well, Albay. <laughs> They're not the good guys. Okay, this is gonna be on the air. Oh, <laughs> okay lang, bala sila. Mm. Well, what else do you see yourself building though, or designing for? You know, actually, to help. Like you talked about problem solving earlier. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had like, a con- I conceptualized about like resilient like, architecture that's affordable for where I live because uh, you know vehicles always hit by bagyos. So I did like this conceptual design where, um, basically the house is too walls and then everything in between can be just put on the walls these two adjacent walls and everything could be built in the middle of them so you have protection from the storm and if ever your whole house gets uh, blown away you still have those the foundations that last there that you can build upon time and time mm-hmm. again uh so yeah i did something like that thinking about people that's what you mean to help people you know as you said earlier yeah yeah mm-hmm. How can you help uh, your own barrio though? Like, where are the problems being faced there? Well, you know, you know like, from, from, from architecture up this fu- ah, from an architecture <laughs> front. But... See, uh, since you started the Barangay Captain, nah, nah, just, I mean, wag lang masadong political. <laughs> wag lang masadong political, de ba? Bakit? I'll see that. <laughs> Say um, So, how to help them? Uh, I don't know. I don't know really. It's not yeah. Sorry, I don't know how to help them shit. I gotta think mm-hmm. about that. How am I gonna help my my 
my neighbors. That's true. Like if there's one thing that you can build that can help the, your neighborhood. Well, right now, hospital. I'll be the school. <laughs> build a school, definitely. Build a school. Build a school for for my barrio. Not my barrio. Barangay na pala. For the barangay. Mm-hmm. There's too many basketball courts now. I need more schools. I see. Dami na namin no, eh. Dami mga events. Ano yung mga events hall na puro basketball court. Like, mm-hmm. popping up everywhere. Barang- like, barangay Hall A, B, C. Yeah. Trying to be NBA here. Mm-hmm. Do you have any, you actually do you have any advice you can give to anyone who's thinking about architecture as a, thinking about architecture as a career or as a course, first and foremost? Advice? I'll give you since, advice on... Since you could call yourself as someone already established, right? In the industry. Shit. Yeah. Okay, I'll take it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um... Advice to anybody wanting to get into architecture, just I mean, no, uh, you know, go in there like hoping for the best, and if you don't like it, you don't have to stay. I mean, that's that's I think that's my advice. So go in there, hope for the best. If you don't like it, don't force yourself. Mm-hmm. Anything that would inspire people, though. <laughs> Anything that would inspire people to go and do architecture. Like, what's the biggest? take away from architecture what's what makes you feel good about being an architect hmm. it's a very good question Jack. i think it's um the fact that i get to express myself i mean i, I like the creative world so mm-hmm. being an architect gave me a way to do it and i like building i like the construction part as well i like thinking of how to how to create a space where people can enjoy a space where where ingenuity you can use your ingenuity to you know make everybody's life better I think that's what should inspire you if you want to do architecture you you you, you are you, you are you're given a really big opportunity to help a lot of people mm, that's nice you know someday I hope that I could point to a you know building or a structure and tell my my children that oh, I know the guy who built this, or who designed this. It's Mr. Felix Imperial. Just call me Tito Berto. Tito Berto. Anyway, th- thank you, dude, for sharing. Oh no worries, been, we're done. It's been nice talking to you. You've been very inspirational and motivational, actually, with yoga. Bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've been actually curious about it personally, or meditation then. But anyway, thank you for talking with me. Thank you for sharing and good luck with all your ventures. And thank you everyone for tuning in. This has been Jinsomnia Nights and I've been Jack. Thank you. Thank you guys. Good evening. Good evening.